if you'll forgive us for going a bit long tonight, what we want to do is we want to take a moment, um, and that moment is simply to commission you. As men and women, Pastor Sarah and I have some words we want to speak over you tonight. We have some words we want to encourage you with. We have some words we want to challenge you with. And we have some words we want to speak over you based on who God has created you to be as men and who God has created you to be as women. So I'm going to start with a few words and then Pastor Sarah is going to share a few words. And then together with one voice, we'll stand and sing one final song. We're going long, so if you need to go, we get it. There's no judgment here. But if you can stay, I believe God has something to say to you in the next few moments as we celebrate and honor what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a man, and what God has called together in his church. So I want to make a request across this room. Women, would you stand to your feet? Ladies, would you stand to your feet? I'll cross this room. Ladies, I want to speak some words over you tonight. I want to speak some words over you as a pastor, as a brother in Christ, as a fellow member of this church. Uh, oftentimes I just speak from the heart, and yet tonight I think the words that I've written down need to be said as they're written. And so if you don't mind, I want to read these words over you ladies. And this is true about you. This is true for you watching online. This is true of you ladies in this room. Women, I want you to hear this, that women, you are valuable to men. Your thoughts and your insights matter to us. Your feelings and your intuition are indispensable for our lives. Your friendship and your presence are invaluable for our future. You are in every way a gift of God to our lives and to this world. And I can't imagine a life, nor would I want to, without what women bring to the table as friends and classmates and colleagues and mothers and sisters and aunts and grandmas and wives and daughters, and most importantly, as sisters in Christ. Women, I honor you for how God has created you and for the purpose to which God has called you. And ladies, I am so, so sorry for how you have been treated by so many men in your life. I hate that some of you have been abused or harmed in your home growing up. I hate that some of you have been used or taken for granted in romantic interests and relationships. I hate that some of you have been dismissed or patronized at school. I hate that some of you have been overlooked or ignored at work. I hate that you have been objectified and treated like objects in our culture. And I hate the moments that I have been part of that problem in any way. And I repent of any sin I have committed against the women in my life. You deserve so much better than that. And God sees you as so much more than that. Ladies, hear me. You are image bearers of the almighty God, worthy of dignity and value and respect. You were blood bought by Jesus the Messiah on the cross because he looked at you throughout all of history and determined you were worth it. You are indwelled with the Holy Spirit of God and filled with gifts and courage to live a life, a life worthy of the calling God has put on your life. Hear me on this. Our church needs you. We would not be the same without you. We need your gifts and your abilities and your talents and your insight and your leadership and your presence. We simply cannot be the church God has called us to be without you. Hear me when I say that your guy friends, the guys in your life need you. They need your wisdom and insight. They need your encouragement and influence. If you could only know how meaningful a kind word or an uplifting conversation is to the men in your life. Listen, if God has a husband for you in the future, he needs you. He needs your faith and your wisdom and your tender love and resilient spirit. He will be blessed immeasurably if you spend this time now before you even meet him growing to be more like Jesus. If God has children for you in your future, they need you. One of the most extraordinary and exclusive gifts God bestowed on women is the capacity to create and cultivate new life. The calling to be a mother, whether you work outside the home or not, is a high and a noble one. And don't you dare let anyone convince you that time spent raising children is less valuable because you don't get a paycheck for it. Women have a unique power to shape and influence their children and through them, the world. Thank you, ladies, for the ways you are image bearers and you show us the heart of God more clearly. Your love and your joy and your mercy and your patience, your care for the hurting and attention to the heart of God, show us God more fully. For that we are profoundly grateful. Ours is equal in make and our qualities are nuanced and powerful when we live in harmony. We are better together when we work and worship and lead and laugh and do friendship together. We are better when we lay down pieces of our pride and preferences for the good of one another. We are better when we leverage our strengths to cover one another's weakness. We are better because the Lord makes it so. Distinct but equal, we advance the kingdom together as sisters and brothers and sons and daughters and fathers and mothers and husbands and wives. And above all, as co-workers in Christ. Ladies, hear me clearly tonight. You matter 
to the men in this room. Ladies, you can have a seat. I'm going to ask the men in the room now to stand up and hear the truth that we have to speak over you tonight. Hear me when I say that, men, you are valuable to women. Your thoughts and emotions are valuable to women, worthy to be heard, to be weighed, and to be received by us. And men, I want to speak over you now the truth that God created you in his image, and he calls you good. He calls you worthy of love. He tells you that your physical strength and appearance is not all that defines you that it is not weak to show emotion. In fact, it's not weak to show emotion, not just in your composed moments, but in your wonderings and in your raw ponderings over life. King David did it, Jesus did it, and it is beautiful and it is good. And I'm here to tell you as a woman that your paycheck or prospective career should not get to dictate your value in our eyes as women. Your character and your integrity are what makes you a good friend, partner, husband, father. That is what we women truly desire to find in you, that character, that integrity. And I am sorry for the times that you have been judged solely by your strength or income or performance at school or in the workplace. When women have not listened to you or respected you, not because of your character, but because of superficial or shallow standards. When women have made you our competition rather than our ally. When women have superimposed the traumas and failings of other men over your life and judged you undeservingly. And even if you have been those men at some point, when we have not allowed Jesus to sit on the throne of judgment and mercy in your life, and we've tried to take that place instead. I know I've been guilty of all these things in my view of men, and I've been guilty of the latter, and for that, I am sorry. There is grace for you, and the Lord reminds us of that, that our differences are uniquely good, and they make us uniquely powerful as partners in this life a threat to the enemy as we together express the fullness of God as men and women together in his kingdom. You see, when you initiate and lead with humility, it is so powerful for us. When you use your words to build us up and build others up, it is healing. When you listen intently to our thoughts and feelings, it honors and empowers us in a very unique way. Men, you are more than your addictions. You are more than your lusts or your past failures, more than your accomplishments, more than your job title or resume. How? Because Jesus says so. And we as women who are following the Lord say so in agreement. We say amen to God and his perspective over your life. Because families, they need your presence, both your current family and your future family. Your impact on the family is unique and it is God given. You are not limited to the best or worst of your own earthly father. Friends, both men and women, they need your vulnerability. Look at the candor of the disciples. Jesus embraced their weaknesses, their doubts, their questionings and fears, and it made them more like him. The next generation needs your example the young men and women in your families, the children in our ministries here, the middle schoolers, the college-age students just five years below you, they need your example. The church is better when you pursue Jesus wholeheartedly, when you give your time, talents, and treasure to the kingdom, it advances. Just as Eve was crafted to improve and enhance and complement Adam, you were, do, you were crafted to do the same. You men, you enhance and you improve women's existence. You help women see attributes of God with more vibrance and with more focus. His father's heart, his protective nature, the power of pursuit and consistency, just to name a few. Our make is equal in value and our quality is nuanced and powerful when we use them in harmony. We are better when we work together, worship together, and lead together. We are better when we lay down pieces of our pride, preferences, and lives for the good of each other. 
We are better when we leverage our strengths to cover each other's weaknesses. And we are better because the Lord God made it so. Distinct but equal, we advance the kingdom of God together. As sisters, brothers, daughters, sons, mothers, fathers, husbands, and wives. Above all, as co-workers in Christ. And men, you are valuable to women. So men, if you would stand together with your brothers, friends, partners, we're gonna worship the Lord God with one voice together. Join us.